Is there going to be another season of goalie drama? We break down the good, the bad, and the not so great of the Minnesota Wilds and NHL's offseason tactics. Plus, Dr. Tyler Stewart of Peak Vestibular Center joins us to help educate us on concussions. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge, Royal Credit Union, and Peak Vestibular Center. This is Season 3, Episode 133. Marcus Felino fan club assemble. Not only is sodastick.com the only place to get your official Marcus Felino fan club tee, but it's also the only place to get all your favorite wild team garb, plus so much more beyond hockey. Use code BARDOWNBEAUTIES for 15% off your total purchase at sodastick.com. Hello, everybody. We're back. Bar Down Beauties, our first. Hold on, Fred. Hold on. Our first episode without our cohort, Alexis Pearson. We love her. Heartbroken. Uh, but I'm Jesse Pierce. He's producer Fred. We've got you covered. Bar Down Beauties is going to continue on. You are all beauties. Fred and I are beauties, too. So that's the plural of the sense. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. I'm saying it. Just kidding. Uh, no, it's been a long time coming. Yes, but no, once again, thank you to Alexis for all that she did. Super excited to see where her career takes her. Um, she has left this part behind to pursue some other opportunities that came her way, but uh, we couldn't have made this what it has been without uh, all of her assistance. So thank you to Alexis. We're going to miss her, but again, we got you covered. Lots of wild talk, Fred. We've got lots going on because the Minnesota Wild like to like crush my soul all at once. Like they can't just have you know, the draft going on and then trade, like it has to all happen at the same time. So let's recap, shall we? We had draft day on Thursday, Friday. We had reports out of Russia that Kirill Kaprizov is possibly (laughs) going to be arrested. We had, I buried the lead there a little bit, I think, guys. Uh, You had Marc-Andre Fleury resigning, Jacob Middleton resigning, Cam Talbot may be mad. I don't know. I mean, a lot, a lot of schedule release too. And then development camp starts this coming week. See? Soul crushing, Fred. I know there was a lot of things like I would never have put that stuff on my bingo card. <laughs> like there was just <laughs> mostly the <laughs> Russia I, thing? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, when I saw that news alert, like warrant out for his arrest. I'm like, what? Mm, let's let's start there. We yeah, won't, we we won't bury there. that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, uh, very sensitive subject. I have been asked numerous times if people feel that the, uh, that Batman and the league and then Bill Guerin are kind of downplaying it. I think publicly they have to, I think they have to be very careful about what they say, what they're doing. I think a lot of that has to remain behind closed doors because it's such a sensitive issue. You certainly don't want to jeopardize not only your relationship with Kirill Kaprizov or even just Russian players in general, but you don't want to jeopardize their safety either. And I think that's something um, that we might be forgetting because things are not great in Russia, to put it lightly. Um, we know we have our very loyal Russian listeners, and of course, we appreciate you guys. Um, but it's it's a curious situation, to say the least. Nothing's been confirmed except the fact that Kirill does remain in Russia. He is not in the U.S. as, as far as we know, but we don't know if there indeed is a warrant out for his arrest, where he's at. This is the second year in a row he's just gone completely like a wall, which is always interesting to me. Uh, we might have to call in Marcus Felino reinforcements to go pluck him <laughs> out. Um, because if you guys hadn't listened back in like episode 80 last summer, Marcus said that he would go to Russia himself and get Kirill Kaprizov because this happened last year. He just hadn't signed yet. So not as dramatic, but uh, Fred, do you, uh, what do you take of the whole situation? I'm not going to pretend that either you or I are much for foreign affairs by any means, but um, you know, do you see Kirill Kaprizov getting over here in time to start training camp come August? Uh, yes, because he's a magician. Um, <laughs> this is true. He's probably like in Miami <laughs> <Just> <laughs> again, like was, again, like yeah. last year. Um, I think, I think one thing that Russo said on the Dan Brer show earlier this week was just how hard it is for someone to get into Russia from America right now, because apparently yeah. Kirill he like stayed like a week in Dubai just to make sure all of his paperwork would be okay for him to go through the multiple checkpoints to get in and out of the country, especially right. for someone coming from America. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely a, a tough situation for anyone who's a Russian player. That's, that's kind of where I am sitting. I've, I feel bad for anyone who is someone who's a Russian player trying to play outside of their home country. Mm-hmm. Um, you're balancing the loyalty to your home and balancing the loyalty to the ever possibility for the American dollar. 
Right. You know, it, exactly. it's, it's like, it's like, which, which is going to be more important. And even last night, listening to the draft, they were talking about our team scared to draft Russians right now because of the right. situation. Right. No, I mean, and, and I think it's a good segue as we still call it. Uh, Daniil Yurov was there available for the Minnesota wild to select at number 24 in the first round. Um, a Russian player who played in the junior leagues, for Russia, hoping to make it into the KHL this year. Um, but I think that absolutely was probably a reason that maybe he slipped down in order for, for Minnesota to grab him is because there's just some timidness surrounding it because nobody knows what is happening. Um, the other thing I need to remind people too, it seems of Kirill Kaprizov is a Russian countryman. So it's not necessarily, Oh, we need to go rescue him and take him from his home country. Like that is darn near impossible. You can't even get Brittany Griner out right now. Right. And that's a completely different situation, but he's not even an American citizen. So there's no way the government's going to help go extradite him or anything like this either. And again, the utmost concern is for his safety, making sure that things are okay with him and his family and he's got to do what's best. Uh, but it'll be curious to see if Russia makes him sort of a political pawn um, or makes an example out of him, which would of course suck for, for all of, all of us yeah, here. I mean, you've got love that, to watch what was him. A flyer prospect now has to serve like three years. In yes, military he, camp? he was officially arrested. Oof. And and as a reminder, something that I learned and educated myself on. So you are required to serve one year of military service in Russia between the ages of 18 and 27. Kirill Kaprizov is 25. And now he has been um uh what's the word I'm looking for, Fred? He has been exempt. That's the word exempt from from doing so but i believe that exemption expired june 30th so again that's where a lot of these questions come in still no validity necessarily to those reports out of russia still not sure what's going on so i want to reiterate that but uh all the best hopefully uh we got some time before training camp so hang in there wild fans it'll be okay i promise insert nice happy music and all um, Minnesota fans of any sports going like mm, i don't believe you i know i'm just no. see you know, without Alexis, somebody has got to be positive and it's hard for Fred or I to be that person, but we're going to try. I'm going to be positive, perky, positive, Jesse, like I used to be in my youth, uh, before I've been jaded and hurt and scorned. Anyway, back to the draft, uh, Liam. Okay. Oh, I'm so bad at pronouncing things too, by the way, oh, Lee, yeah, right. Why wouldn't you Liam Ogren? I believe is his name. That, that looks the best, um, was picked number 19, that number 19 pick in the first round coming courtesy of the Kevin Fiala trade, uh, with the LA Kings. They also got Brock Faber in that trade. Go back to last week's episode to hear more about that breakdown. Um, but those are two wingers in Yurinov and Ogren. Love it. Uh, I think they're only probably about two years away from being able to be NHL ready. Ultimately, they've got the size, they've got the ability to push the pace, which is obviously a big thing that Minnesota is stressing on offense. And, uh, you know, they seem to be good. I don't want to say replacements for a Kevin Fiala because it's hard to replace an 85 point goal scorer, but um, certainly deepens the prospect pool, Fred. It's not just full of defense now. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. give any more. <laughs> Cause I covered it all. You yes. covered it all. I, I mean, covered... my, my favorite part about the draft is watching these peak who they think are peak alpha males peacocking towards the stage. Is... That's why I watch the NHL draft. It's true. Some of the fits were pretty good too. Last night. I got to say some of these guys look good. I, I personally just keep picturing myself cause I'll be that mom that's crying in the audience. Like, Oh, he did it. All those early mornings of hockey and you know, all that jazz. Cause moms don't spend all that time in the freezing cold rink just to watch you lose. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. A lot of moms do. A, a lot, lot of moms, moms do. do. A lot of moms do. A lot of moms do. We still love it. Still absolutely love it. Uh, continuing within the Minnesota wild Safir, we have uh, Mark Andre Fleury back in action. The flower returns. I'm biased. I'm just excited to be able to chat with a future hall of famer again for another season for longer. He couldn't be a nicer human being. Very exciting moment in my career as we still wait for Wayne Gretzky to join us on this podcast. But until then, Mark Andre Fleury, hopefully we'll have him on. Uh, Fred, do you think so last year? Remember, if we go back, let's go back a couple weeks ago because the season just freaking ended and we're back in at it again. Anyway, uh, Cam Talbot, Mark Andre Fleury did a 50 50 split down the stretch once that trade was made, once uh, Mark Andre Fleury came here. Do you think that that is something? the wild are going to look to continue to do because it did seem to be fairly successful until the playoffs when they went with Mark Andre Fleury solely. I don't know. I just want to get Cam Talbot's wife's opinion. 
You are the third person that has told me to have Kelly Talbot on the podcast. And I think, (laughs) why not? So Kelly, if you're listening, (laughs) sure. I I would love to have her share her explanation because personally, the tweet, quote unquote, that everybody refers to about her anger, I think she was just being a supportive spouse. You don't think your wife, Kelly, was going to get up in arms if uh, if we cut you and put you into a no win situation on the podcast and some, mm-hmm. whatever the relation, whatever the correlation would be to podcast. She's more of a silent assassin, not a in public mm. assassin. <laughs> that makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. I like I think, that. I think with Cam and, and Mark Andre Flurry, I think it really is going to be a battle of who's going to lose their prime the fastest. <sighs> That's harsh, it, it it's it, it's it's harsh but be, it's true. It's harsh, but it's true. Who's 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 farther down the hill as we go through the season. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that either can't play and I'm not saying that either can't win us games and steal us some games, but stealing games. That wasn't cam's MO. Thank really? you. See, this is, that's the real reason we're happy. Alexis left is because I don't have to argue this point anymore. <laughs> the gold debate just comes very the golden, it's co- <laughs> Yes. There's no debate because cam tell it wasn't saving games. Um, he wasn't that great guys. I'm sorry. I still, stand by it but I think you're absolutely right they're both over the hill quote unquote in goalie terms Bill Guerin tried to negate that yesterday but it's it's true I mean 37 and 35 ain't exactly as flexible as it used to be not everybody's a Tom Brady out there crushing things but um yeah I think that's a good way to put it though uh, oh who's gonna who's gonna reach their prime who's gonna be healthy the race to the bottom <laughs> the race to the bottom Ooh. Uh, not nice now they're never gonna come sorry yeah (laughs) but i i am i'm curious to see i mean i i don't buy into necessarily the drama that people want to make of the goaltending situation i think both flurry and talbot are professionals and i think if anything mark andre flurry pushes cam talbot to be more competitive i think it's okay to play with a little fire and a little pissed offness right like yeah that is my net okay well go take it then like i mean that's the way a competitor competes and I think that is what Marc-Andre Fleury helps Cam Talbot do. I think you saw Cam Talbot play his best hockey once Fleury got here because he didn't want to lose the net. He knew that Marc-Andre Fleury was capable of being a go-to starter, and he didn't want to have that be an option. So I think it's a good thing to have this tandem together. Again, yes, there is now the very tightened cap space, $1.4 million left to play around with, which wasn't, isn't a whole lot. And Cam Talbot only has a year left on his contract. Now, Marc-Andre Fleury signed for two, uh, but if he retires after this season, there is no hit to the cap uh, for Minnesota Wild. So that's definitely beneficial, but it's curious to see how it pans out. We've got a lot of time to figure that out. Certainly. I mean, as I mentioned, my first question to Dean Evson day one of training camp is who's your starting goalie. Just, you know, it's flurry. find out it's okay. You think flurry let's yeah. place the bets. Now placing your bets, 10 56 on June 8th. July 8th. July 8th. July. Oh my month. God. Our summer is going away. Sorry. July 8th, 1057. No, 1057 AM, July 8th. He, uh, Fred thinks that it is going to be Mark Andre Fleury. Now I have to go Cam Talbot because we can't both pick Fleury. <laughs> All right. I pick Cam Talbot. I, you know what? Actually, I think it. Yeah. Let's go Cam Talbot. Cam Talbot. I mean, will be and, and I also want to stress that they are both very nice individuals. None yes. of this discussion is about their character <clears throat> or their work ethic or their prowess as an athlete. It's more of just what's going to get them past the first round. Yep, that's true. That's uh, that's it. That's 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 it, right? That's it. That's it. Well, and again, I think that's what makes Mark Andre Fleury electing to come back to Minnesota pretty special. Not only for the fan base, but he saw something in this locker room. He saw something in this team that says they're still a contender as Bill Guerin had said earlier last week, you know what? Everybody's the same except Kevin Fiala, which again, that's a big piece. It's I don't want to overstate that, that that is a big piece to not have, but everybody else is still there and no, don't come at me in the mentions. Like, well, maybe not Kirill. Like we talked about it, we covered it. It'll be fine. Let's relax. So that's your Mark Andre flurry news. That's going to kind of wrap it up again. Um, off season, just beginning development camp starts this week. So we'll have content coming to you from that. But uh, a lot of hockey. Hockey's back, baby Fred. I, baby Fred, Fred, baby. Yeah, you can cut that. You know, it's good TikTok material. Stand in. <laughs> <laughs> See, we got this. Bardown Beauties, let's go. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we do come back, Dr. Tyler Stewart of Peak Vestibular Center talks to us about concussions, the misconceptions with concussions, and how he is helping treat them in a very unique, unique way. <laughs> 
stay tuned. Okay, I want you to think of the first time you took a big hit on the ice. Maybe it was a men's adult league. Maybe you were slammed into the boards in a big game, or maybe you pulled a Jesse and just tripped over the blue line. Either way, it's happened. Boys hockey, girls hockey, it doesn't matter. We've all been there with our first big hits. And unfortunately, those hits can add up over time. Hockey players can end up with dizziness, headaches, and pain, and a large portion have even experienced concussion-like symptoms as a result. Thankfully, there's an answer. Dr. Tyler Stewart with Peak Vestibular Center specializes in the drug-free treatment of nagging concussion symptoms. Dr. Stewart formulated the 3A Brain Restoration Program, a comprehensive program to get to the root cause of your symptoms. He utilizes the latest technology and techniques to get you back on the path to your best life and back on the ice. If you're dealing with dizziness, headaches, or pain after taking one too many hits, contact Dr. Stewart for a complimentary consultation today. Go to dizzinesscare.com or call 715-690-2211 to schedule your complimentary consultation. And joining us now, Dr. Tyler Stewart of Peak Vestibular Center. Tyler, how are you doing? Tell us a little um, bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, first of all. I love your guys' show. Um, <laughs> my name is Dr. Tyler Stewart. I am a chiropractor with Peak Vestibular Center in Hudson, Wisconsin. Um, I grew up playing hockey my entire life. I uh, played high school hockey with um, Eau Claire North, and I played college hockey ACHA level with my undergrad, Life University. Nice. So big hockey guy, needless to say, right? So absolutely. What led you to explore this career path and kind of focus on, you know, concussions is a major part of what you're trying to help. I mean, was there anything specific in your playing career, anything that you saw? I mean, certainly hockey is no for two concussions and, and all the symptoms that go along with it. Sure. Uh, so first of all, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. Um, <laughs> I, I, but, but I was pretty good at hockey. So I played, you know, varsity level as a freshman um, and I got beat up pretty bad. So I, I sustained a couple con concussions myself um, over, over time, they started to add up and I started to have some bad symptoms such as dizziness, a lot of neck pain, headaches, and uh, chiropractic is what helped me uh, get past those concussions and essentially fix them completely. And that changed my, my life and my life path to the point of where I wanted to specialize in this type of care and uh, provide it for other people that have gone through the same thing. Right. That makes a lot of sense. You know, there are a lot of misconceptions as to what a concussion actually is. How would you define a concussion for those that might not be aware? Sure, sure. So a concussion is when a force to the head and neck results in injury to the brain cells. Think of a brain cell or a neuron as a tree. The neuron has structures that resemble the roots, trunk, and leaves of a tree. The purpose of the roots and leaf structures of the neuron are to connect itself with other neurons, sending and receiving messages all throughout the body. The trunk or the axon of the neuron is the pathway for these messages to move upon, just like water moving from the roots of a tree up the trunk to the leaves. A concussion occurs when a blow to the head and neck shears or pulls, twists, or even breaks these axons of the brain cells. Just like a tornado shears and breaks the trunk of a tree, normal brain signals can no longer transmit efficiently along these damaged cells which leads to concussion symptoms such as headaches, uh, dizziness, nausea, light sensitivity, mood issues, and uh, in some serious cases, loss of consciousness. So to sum it up, a concussion is when a blow to the head and neck results in neurological symptoms. Sure. And those symptoms can linger for months, years. I mean, we've seen NHL guys come out and say, I've had X amount of concussions and it's led to even further brain damage. I mean, tell us a little bit about that from your experiences. Sure. Um, I think that all kind of came to light when uh, Sidney Crosby went through his issues back, back when uh, we kind of thought that he kept getting concussions, but he was just never over that first one. Um, the majority of concussion symptoms will resolve within a short period. Uh, however, up to a, about a quarter of people will have persisting symptoms that last for longer than a month. And that's called post-concussion syndrome. These symptoms can simply be a mild headache that comes and goes infrequently, or the symptoms can be pretty darn awful and occur throughout the day uh, for months or even years. Uh, recently, I had a new patient that was reporting dizziness, sleep issues, problems focusing, and headaches. Uh, we were able to pinpoint that these were lingering symptoms from a concussion that she sustained after slipping on ice. 
Um, and thankfully, we were able to safely and effectively help her heal. So now she can function much better on a day to day basis. So yes, concussion symptoms can linger for quite some time. However, especially nowadays, there are care options for healing even after a lot of time has passed since the injury. You've mentioned you recently treated a female patient going through this. I've actually heard that women are more susceptible to concussions compared to men, um, especially even though there's no checking allowed in women's hockey, technically by rule standards. Uh, is that true or how does that affect? I mean, are men and women different in that capacity as well? Sure. So uh, believe it or not, it is a fact that women do report more concussions than men. Is it because we're smarter and we decide to like, <laughs> right. take care of ourselves better? Is that what it is? <laughs> you, you know, I don't know if they've done any official research on that, but I, I can see that being a factor. Um, you know, if I went into full detail as to why this is true, we'd be way beyond our allotted time. Um, so you can find a little bit more info on this at dizzinesscare.com forward slash concussions. Uh, but women have some key anatomical and hormonal differences that may be contributing factors to their increased concussion reporting. Uh, we just discussed how a brain cell or a neuron resembles a tree. Well, in women, the tree trunk portion of the neuron or the axon is smaller compared to men, which means it is of greater risk to be injured from a blow to the head. Uh, comparatively, it, men have more neck muscle, muscle mass than women, and the thicker the neck, the lower the risk for concussion as well. Um, a study found that when women sustained a concussion during a very specific time of their menstrual cycle, they had worse outcomes as well. And then finally, is it just a question of culture? Are women actually not experiencing more concussions, but are they just reporting them more than men? So we know that women are more in tune with their bodies than men, and, and women are also more likely to seek out health care than men. Um, so, you know, we have to consider that as well. Uh, you'll find a little bit more information on this at dizzinesscare.com forward slash concussions. Right. You know, that leads to a, an interesting point because it's been discussed and kind of a hot topic for the past couple of years, especially in hockey, but football as well, that, you know, you're especially on the men's side, you're tough, you play through it. I mean, do we need to change that narrative a little bit more, especially when we've become to realize how damaging concussions can be and how damaging CT. I mean, you earlier uh, referenced Sidney Crosby and how he wasn't over that first one. Is that a part of the discussion that needs to be had too to help reduce the amount of concussions and the long-term symptoms that are associated? Sure, I do believe so. Um, it it kind of goes with the saying, um, you know, would you do X, Y, Z for a million dollars? You know, when we all played that game when we were young, uh, would you jump off that cliff for a million dollars, right? <laughs> um, it kind of goes like that with the with the NHL or or uh, uh, men uh, men sports. Uh, with with women, unfortunately, they especially with hockey, they don't have the opportunities that men have for generating a large amount of money or income from that. Um, so sometimes men would like to hide the symptoms or play through the pain uh, because they have more of a financial incentive to lose than than women would. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's, we applaud it too. I know we talk about, oh, he played through this and he played through this. It's like, no, we can't, that's not good. That's got to hurt too. Not to mention, see again, back to the brains and the smarts, a little bit crazy. I think. <laughs> yeah. on the Real, side I mean, do you remember all the old videos back in the day, like the old sports shows that like they're filling time on TV and it was like biggest hits of the NHL. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, oh, that's crazy sure. to think that that was actually a part of our culture, like 10, 15 years ago. Still is, right? Sure. Like I mean, still... just, go, just go on YouTube, you know, it'll be all over the place. So it's it's still there. And, you know, people just like to see it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like exactly. the old Rome gladiator yeah. days. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Fun. Well, and I always like to point out that men predicted um, their lower region before they ever wore helmets in <laughs> hockey as yes, well. That yep, was a yep. priority for things. So, you know, <laughs> that's kind of. Great. Fantastic. Uh, kind of final question I have for you, Dr. Stewart. Um, after someone experiences a concussion, they might go to the emergency room or go to the doctor, right? Which obviously seems correct. Why would they go see a chiropractor after a concussion in addition to, or in lieu of? Sure. Great question. Great question. Um, a chiropractor has doctorate level uh, expert training on drug-free hands-on diagnosis and treatment. Um, however, you know, due to the complexities of concussion management, you will want to seek out a chiropractor that has advanced training with concussions. Uh, a concussion can cause symptoms and dysfunction of the spine, the eyes, the balance system, the autonomic or exertional system, the motor system, 
the motor system, metabolic and psychological. So you can see it, it, it affects a lot. Now, obviously we're, we're dealing with the brain and the brain controls everything. So we can have an issue really anywhere in the body. Um, due to how complex this is, I've developed the 3A Brain Restoration Program to group and simplify care to focus on alignment of the spine, accuracy of eye movements, and adaptability of the vestibular and nervous system. The 3A program uses diagnostic techniques to find the areas of dysfunction that the injury created and in a safe, effective, and drug-free way to strengthen and correct those underlying problems. Now, that 3A program is preventative as well. By strengthening and aligning the spine, there is a decreased risk of sustaining a concussion. So the ultimate goal is to keep players at reduced risk of injury, and if an injury so happens, to get you back on the ice as soon as possible. Um, that 3A program is essentially designed around that type of care that got Sidney Crosby back on the ice and got him over his concussions when pretty much everything else failed to get him back. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Now you focus on concussions and, and the symptoms that are associated. Is there other work though, that you guys do at peak vestibular center, or is that kind of the main hub of your, your day and your, your work? Sure. So that's pretty much the main hub of it. Now, of course we are a, a, just a general chiropractic clinic at the same time. So I will see anyone that has, you know, anything from, um, a banged up shoulder to some simple, you know, spinal pain or spinal issues. Um, our main focus though is uh, concussions, dizziness, those, those types of uh, vestibular and neurological issues. Sure. Cause I'm going to probably have to see you after carrying this podcast throughout all the years, <laughs> right? You know, my back's starting to hurt. Yeah. I'm so. sure you're feeling it by now. <laughs> well, again, Dr. Tyler Stewart with Peak Vestibular Center, uh, where can folks find you? Where can they uh, get in touch with you and, and all of that good stuff, Tyler? Sure. So uh, they can get some more information at dizzinesscare.com. You can check out our practice website at peakvestibularcenter.com. It's an easier URL that you can look up as northpeakchiropractic.com. Uh, you can give us a call at 715-690-2211. Um, and you can speak directly with me as well. I love it. Well, again, Dr. Stewart, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all the work you're doing. I love it. Encourage you all to check it out. Again, there's no weakness in making sure that you are healthy for yourself, for your future, all of that good stuff. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Thanks again to Dr. Tyler Stewart for joining us. What a fun conversation to have with him. What a unique way to do that. Like I said, my back hurts all the time. So maybe I could just do that. I don't have to be concussed. However, Fred Avery probably gave me a concussion. Did you see the black eye that she gave me with the headbutt no. to the eye? Oh yeah. You can't see it now because I covered it with makeup, but <laughs> she smoked me with her head right in the eye socket, like right in that very easy to bruise area. So um, yeah, probably concussed, probably going to go visit Dr. Tyler Stewart. At it's definitely Stewart a mom Center. thing. It is. Kelly's, she Kelly's loves... had a scratched cornea from one of the kids. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. It's, she gets beat up way more than I do. Oh, I know. Avery loves to just like ram me all the time. Like, especially when she's mad, she's a stubborn little mule. That one love her, but she's just <laughs> she's like a goat. <laughs> she is like, she just like, Oh my gosh. Like what? And then she like cries. Cause of course she hurt herself too. Like, okay, like let's. Let's not do that anymore. How about like learning just stop lessons that. by hurting mom? <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. I was like, I didn't even notice as a black eye until our dear friend, Caitlin Gamble was like, do you have a black eye? I'm like, oh my God, I do like, yeah. Aggressive, aggressive. But Sounds again, like go visit. Mama. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> go visit Dr. Tyler Stewart at peak vestibular center. Again, this is the new kind of reconfigured bar down beauties. All the love to Alexis. Keep following her on her individual path. Keep following us as we continue to crush out bar down beauties content as you know and love it. Hockey season's here. We're going. Let's go follow us on all of our social media channels. We are now putting more emphasis on the TikTok. You guys know I'm a TikToker. We're going to do a bar down beauties TikTok and it's going to be great. It's going to be epic. Maybe we'll get Fred to dance. Who knows? Time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, Fred. I said it. I said it. Okay. We got it. We give the people what they want. If you want to see Fred do a TikTok dance, leave us a comment. Uh, don't forget to leave us a rating. All of that jazz. Thank you guys for following us. Shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. Better Edge, B-E-T-T-R Edge.com. Constant betting all the time. You'll love to see it. 
sodastick.com, 15% off with code Bardom Beauties at checkout. Don't forget to check out their Beauty League merch that's just released, exclusive to everyone's favorite summer hockey league. Um, and Royal Credit Union, less fee, more free. Peak Vestibular Center as well. We love you all. You guys are awesome. Our listeners, you're awesome. Uh, let, let us know what you're thinking of the new the new vibe. Hopefully, and if you don't like it, don't tell us because I won't listen. So you're stuck with it. All right. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye.